Everyone was having deja vu until I turned and looked at the cat. Anyway, so. Pacific Rim, it just, for the win. That's a rhyme. These are the 580s, and I will not make the same mistake I did with the Triangle uh, Gaias and try to review them entirely up in this room. Um, because I know better, this room is indeed terrible. But that's good, let me explain this at the beginning of this video. Zeus, why don't you get into room treatment? Zeus, because my audience, you guys, are probably 96% of you have no fucking clue what a room treatments even look like. Nor will you are willing to panel up your room and put so this room represents the worst case and well no the great room represents the worst case scenario for acoustics since you go out there and it's like hey that's the worst case scenario in here it's like hey and it sort of dies although it echoes out there so this room represents most people's environments or at least a good sum of you so when i bring these down the basement for the second half of this review then you'll get the finalized thoughts in a well-treated space and don't argue with me that my basement's not well treated it sounds fantastic these are the jbl studio 580s the final piece in the puzzle for zeos spending literally never got one of these for free or reduced i got found them on sale i have the 570s 580s i have the 590s i got the 520 center the only thing i don't have from this series is the subwoofer fuck it i'm not buying the subwoofer i don't need another subwoofer that's not for sale anymore i don't need it so these are the um six and a half inch version the 570s are little tiny ones and of course i'm gonna have to pull them out and put it next to it so you guys can see how cute they look they're little heavy bastards though little cute five and a quarters um less cute six and a half so when i get them down the basement you'll be able to see these compared to the 590s which are taller than rf7 version threes i did not know that until i actually put them right next to each other so there's that um i'm powering them off of the emotiva monoblocks which i don't think they sell anymore which is confusing why wouldn't they sell them anymore and in this room which is where i like this is my like day-to-day -day room this is my like all right cook dinner sit here watch cobra kai or cook breakfast sit here and watch american gods or uh cook brunch come on macaroni and cheese now cook brunch sit here and watch various anime of various uh how not to summon a demon lord i laughed out loud it also just just be a hentai please i'll go fund you to make the rest of the season two a hentai fees so if you've seen any of my reviews of the jbl speakers you already know everything about these because just take that and then click the, the drag slider on your phone and be like boom it's just it's it, it, it it's just bigger it's just bigger and the 590s are just bigger however well, tight three finger loose three finger it's like they scaled it up literally in their fucking modeling program and just hit print it's fantastic there is a very very significant sound change and it's not just low end though i did the whole shape of sound video where i say i, I like the 570s more than i like the uh, uh, triangle gaias up here and then i brought the triangle gaias to the basement where i have heard the 570s and now i'm like oh the triangle gaias sound way better in the basement than the 570s do why is my floor soft right there that's weird i don't like it there's like a soft bit like it's squishy um new house i'm still finding things out i th i'm gonna come out of the bat and say it i think the 570s in this sort of size room still impress me more than these 580s do but the 580s do more more what's the more they take up more volume they get louder i accidentally i just switched from foobar to uh, you know uh pacific rim and foobar plays like a moderate level and videos are like reamplified and like up and i thought that the drivers were going to blow up or the windows were going to shatter but it didn't it just went like i just screamed kaiju screams at me and i was like oh yeah um you know what it is is another thing that i in the shape of sound video i don't mention this and i don't mention it often enough in speaker videos so i'll do it now uh a speaker or a headphone for that matter or an im there is a perfect level of volume of power being pushed to it like 
You can't just take this speaker and put one fiftieth of a watt through it and it goes ah, and then assess the speaker. That's not how a lot would work. There's a absolute where there's a point where those drivers are moving enough to activate the air chamber inside to use the port so the tuning becomes perfect. My screensaver comes on. I love how it starts with a screenshot of um Cowboy Bebop. There is a perfect I don't want to say volume, I don't want to say power. There's like this mixture of the two things where you are just far enough away and you have to turn your amplifiers up just enough and then everything moves and it's like a well-oiled machine. It's like a Formula One car or a heavy duty muscle car. You ever hear a muscle car, like a real like 1960s loping cam muscle car at a stoplight? And it's like, <laughs> like it's going to die at any moment because it's not happy there. That car is tuned, the engine is tuned so that all the parts work best at whatever, 4,500, 5,000 RPM. And then it's perfect. Then it's when the synergy happens. I just made a heart emoji. If I was doing editing, I would take it, I'd be like, and you would see the perfect heart. So all speakers also have a synergy. And I think what, I, what I've discovered now, the reason I prefer the 570s to the 580s in this room and probably the reason why the 590s were like, okay, they're great, but up close, is that I want to push to a certain volume. I'm, I'm, I sit here and I put on my Cobra Kai or whatever fuck I'm watching. Um, I'm going to keep saying Cobra Kai because you need to watch it. And it just sounds, actually, let me get music up. Start F, enter. Hello. Frozen, no. Perfect, there we go. So, when you're sitting in a room and you find your, your ideal volume level, regardless of speaker, you're sitting, big sheet, you don't even know it's playing. You just turn the volume up until you're happy. So the vocals are, are clear and there's some like good ambient sound and you're like, okay, okay. So, the problem being the 570s, I push them in this room. I push them with a little five and a quarters. And I'm like, wow. And these 580s, I don't push them. They just sit there doing their thing. And I'm like, huh, why aren't they impressing me as much as those? Because these want to be pushed. Now I could sit here right now and I could turn that volume up on that DAC down there and then they'll be going there right there there that's trevor morris the fall from dragon age inquisition soundtrack so here's the problem boys and girls you can't buy a you you, you can buy speakers that are too small for a room that's absolutely a problem but you shouldn't buy speakers that are too big for a room that's another problem especially ones that have this sort of issue the um oh right here they are I never actually took them out of the room. Come here, babies. You belong on the speaker wall. Oh, you're dirty. The cat's been snotted on you. These are the Mackie MR624s. Oh my God. And they're filthy. But these were the speakers when I first moved into this house. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to put just a TV here because I don't want to watch shit in the fucking echo chamber. I want to watch something in a room that's like better. It's not the greatest room, but it's better. And I pulled these out. For a very specific reason, these speakers have the ability to play quiet all the way up to pretty fucking loud and be perfect. They're an electric car. They're a Tesla compared to that muscle car we are talking about earlier because they're self-powered and therefore there's a possibility. I don't want to verify, guarantee this. But there's a possibility the DSP in the unit knows the volume it's currently at and goes, we're playing real quiet. There's not going to be any low end. The treble is going to, let's just adjust the frequency curve for this particular volume. And it does. And as you raise the volume, it sort of straightens that out. And then maybe it's like, oh, he's playing real loud. We're going to distort if we have too much low end. So we're just going to drop that. So it always modifies and compresses and warps the sound to be perfect at quiet, at normal, or at loud. It's, it's a great speaker linked in the description, self-powered. Now the problem with an old school speaker is it has no ability to adjust that. You feed it power and based on that power it goes to a, a 
passive crossover and a bunch of capacitors and and uh fucking i don't know i literally anything else from electronics it's just uh resistors and what are those ferrite chokes and shit like that all have to get this power there's loss there's gains it tries to twist the sound but it only does it based on what's being fed to it and therefore you get whatever it just gets whatever so the moral of the story is if you have a small room you want to put a speaker in that's going to be performing at its peak at your listening level and i don't blow my brains out i have expensive ears ears required to pay the mortgage you don't fuck around when someone's like hey i got firecrackers you want to go throw them in the woods i'm like no or i say yes wear sunglasses earplugs and fucking noise canceling headphones while we're doing that activity like live concerts were not in my repertoire <laughs> once i started paying the bills with what i actually hear so I don't push things. Everyone's like, Zeus, you're going to go deaf because you play things so loud. I'll play a movie loud in the basement where it's like movie levels. But if I'm just doing this all day, YouTube videos, random music just to hear a new album, it's usually like a pretty calm level. It's like, it's like, it's chill. It doesn't blast through my house. And the problem is with the 580s versus the 570s versus those uh, triangle towers, which are also smaller towers, is that I sat here with these for a while and I was like, huh, I'm not as impressed by these 580s that I am the 570s or the, or the Gaia's. And then I unlocked it by accident, by being a fuck up. I wonder how many people have improved the world because they're fuck ups and they fuck something up and they realize, holy shit, Eureka. So yeah, no, this is... That is so fucking loud that I can't even describe it to you. Like if I talk and the GoPro is done, I'm talking, I'm talking the exact same amount of time that I was when I started, you just can't hear me because these are pushing ballistic levels of 105 to 110 decibels. And that's where they're impressive. In this room, in this echo chamber, in this, this distance, in the spacing, and this music, this is how loud you have to play these. Now, I'm going to be curious because I'm probably going to re-listen to the 590s after I bring these out in the basement. Because I'm giving you this like spiel at the beginning of the video. Then I'm going to cut it off and go down the basement. But I want to listen to the 590s. And I want to know if maybe I've just been underpowering them. Like, because the 590s versus 570 debate, which apparently is a debate in my mind, I think the 570s performed like they were the more perfect of the series. But maybe my problem was just I didn't push the 590s to literally fucking kill me. This is death levels. We're at death levels. There's no subwoofer. There's just four six and a half inch drivers and that murder thing on some monoblocks. And it's just orgasmic. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, that's enough for this video, Todd. I think I've, I think I've gone over, I can make a whole other video. Shape of sound versus, um, I guess, p power to weight. It's like a power to weight ratio in a car. Like you can have a 2,000 pound car and you have 500 horsepower in it and it's just it's crashed into a wall. But you have a 2,000 pound car and a 300 horsepower and she's got just, just enough, to, everything's perfect. The weight and balance and distribution, it's perfect. And these speakers want more than I'm giving them, than I've ever given them. See that? See that? That's exciting. And then, then this. This, this is not, this is no good. This is no good. Right here, 13 on that. I'm looking at the number there. I have very good vision. That says 13. And 13 space dandy is no more. 17, 20, 22, 20, like 24 out of 38 for some reason is like, oh, everything's sort of balance is it hits that perfectly like everything's good mode okay enough of it up here i'll move this wallpaper downstairs we'll move these speakers downstairs where i'm going to do their sound demo and we'll give them a listen so <laughs> gotta mute it can't get a goddamn copyright fucking I love reviewing speakers without hearing them. It's like reviewing art without seeing it. Um, so basement treatment, big boys, 
littler boy. Remember when I said, oh, we're gonna be able to compare? Remember how little the 570 looked compared to this? Chonk. Chonk is here compared to, fuck. So, um, Songkaz SGD1 feeding into the Tuxardis Achilles. Sock, Securidis. I'll get it eventually. I'll ask the computer to read the name for me. Um, so I'm tube amping these because they are a horn. They're pretty efficient. They're not like that efficient, but they're efficient enough. And I'm pushing them to like. Wow. Love how that just ended like. Not bad for eight watts. Um, I'm gonna do a review dedicated to those tube amps, but you know, if I pull them up in a fucking video, it's like, hey, what do those tube amps do? See this video, this video, this video, this video, this video. So let's sit down in a Volvo seat for my sim racing cockpit. And let's look at these things and go, oh God, it looks so good. I didn't adjust the light on this one. Fool. Quick, erase everything, restart it. There, now they're balanced. There was no balance in the force. Now there's balance. So, how do they sound here? Well, unlike the other speakers I've had down here, I'm creeping these closer. Just come on, come on, come come here. Now, when I did the 570, the little baby ones, I actually put them up on boxes. I'm gonna use them as desk speakers, and I'm feeling it with these again. In a in a decent room, that whole like play it louder, play it fucking louder isn't required if you just, just get closer. Because here there's no limitations. There's no, well, there is a TV, but I'm not like down here where everything has to be sort of play. If you can play with placement, if you have wheels on your chair and you can just like slide your ass forward, you can start experiencing sound and the way, it, just move around the cockpit freely, boys and girls. That's very loud. Now lower that. I'm not pausing it, I'm just muting it, which that has a soft mute, which I didn't remember this SGD1 having a soft mute. It's got the good DAC. So we sit here and um, yeah, better than the 570s here. Definitely better, more, just bigger. They're still low, by the way. Now this is not exactly a standard height chair I'm sitting in. In a couch, you would slump a little bit lower, but I'd still like a hot, like, do you see where the, RF7s and the 590s are. They are roughly in that like, like sitting in my big chair, big boy chair. Clips are dead ear level. JBLs are like two inches below that, but they're such a big waveguide, it doesn't matter. This we sort of got, we're just, we're shifted down. So these are more like a normal size tower. Like there's the Esprit Gaia's, which share a sound demo with these 580s. Same track demo list when you go and look. So I have to sit here and just, just obsessing with tubes now. And I, I heard these with tubes upstairs in the great room when they were sitting next to the RF7s. And it's like, that's an unfair fuck you comparison. So now that I'm down here and we're just doing no, no split drivers, no split by amp or anything, just tubes, just pushing this. In fact, let me get the other remote so I can actually pause and not have to do the soft mute thing. Ooh. Yoshi Horikawa Nuba from Spaces. Nubia, Nubia or Nuba? I can't tell if that's part of her clothing or not. It's an I, Nubia. I haven't really listened to the Spaces album enough to know every song and I really should cause uh, Yoshi Horikawa is the man. Let's skip to this. It's also a little bit weird reviewing these, like the last half of this, because I started earlier today, upstairs. I gave you that whole long spiel about stuff. Then I came down here, finished the review of the RF7s, then sound demoed the RF7s, and then pushed those out of the way to bring these down here, sound demoed these, and now we this is like the final review of today or that I'm gonna be able to get done. And it's like I'm coming off of RF7s. And it's a, that's a, that's a $3,600 pair of verses. And I looked it up. These are currently on sale. In fact, I'll even show you that I looked it up because it's here. 580s, currently $800. 
there's no loudspeakers, you don't see plural, and you only see one. That's singular. That's $800 each. Now, if you follow me on any other things, if you watch me on Twitch, if you're on the unboxing channel, if you care about, I don't really Instagram or Twitter enough, but I do have links in the description that will take you to all the weird social media shit. If you follow me on that, you'll know, or just watch the YouTube, um, I like to post on the YouTube community tab, when there's like a stupid sale. JBL had a stupid sale, and I didn't pay $800 each for these. I paid $650 for the pair. Or was it 700 for the pair? Less than the cost of one for the pair from JBL. Not some weird scam site that you don't trust. And so do I assess these speakers now in front of you? Yes. That's a saber dance by various artists. Because I guess I don't know who made it. Um, do I assess these speakers as a $1,600 pair, which is not a little bit, or as a sub $800 pair, which is what I bought them for? Because for sub $800, <laughs> drain your wallets, motherfucker. But at $1,600, it's more like, well, what else can you get? I start thinking about things. I go like, all right. They're, they're not a huge tower. Like, this is actually probably more like the lines of what a normal tower is. Those are a little bit of a tiny baby tower, five and a quarters. And they're short, but they're also $2,400. So they're like smaller, but more expensive, like old netbooks used to be. Oh, you want 11 inch screen, $2,000. So we got these, which are a six and a half. Dual six and a half is absolutely respectable in the tower world. Like the, the old pioneers used to be five and a quarters. And I was like, those are little baby towers, little baby towers. These are actual legit towers. Now you go up to something like the 590s, those have eight inch in the front. Now you're talking about big boy towers and those are big boy towers and those are tens in the front. And those are even bigger big boy towers. And if you want to include the heresies as a tower, which they really aren't, that's a 12 in the front. Um, so these are like, the smallest real tower, like real towers. Like, okay, when I think of tower speaker, I think of this sort of capability and low end and volume. This is where we define it. And you're gonna pay anywhere from six, seven, eight hundred dollars a pair to twenty four hundred dollars a pair. And I think they're probably the lowest. Well, I would say the lowest I'd pay is a dollar, but the highest I'd pay for these, I wouldn't pay retail for them. I'm going to link to JBL, I'll link to Amazon, wherever they are. I think if you paid a grand for a pair of these, you'd made off well. You did real good. They're currently $800 each, so $200 for the extra one will be like, that's the fucking deal. That's where my mindset puts it. If you see these drop on sale, if I announce the sale again, and it's $500 each, jump on it. They work for 1000 a pair. 1200 a pair, and we start looking at like you can get Kef LS50s, which are a much more defined speaker. No sub with that. That's just a speaker for $1,000 a pair. Then you can always add a subwoofer. There's the Emotiva sub. Zeos, link the Emotiva sub in the description. This is the S12 or SE12. So th there's, a, there's a line where it's like, okay, the 570s are the most adorable little baby towers. And I love them. And they work near field and they fit in a room and they're great. But when I bought, I, actually, those are more expensive now too. They're not on sale. But I, but even like off sale, they're still like a thousand. It's like a thousand. You can pay a thousand. Okay. When you buy like sixteen hundred dollars, uh, wait for a sale. I love these speakers. I love the five nineties. Have I ever told anyone to go out and buy the five nineties when they're not on sale? That's eleven $1 hundred dollars a piece. Twenty two hundred dollars is a lot of fucking money. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of speaker, but it's a lot of money. So I'm cheap, motherfucker. I'm gonna tell you to wait on these until you can get them for a thousand or under. That's it. I love the way they sound down here, by the way. We, we did that whole, um, you know, find the right volume. And I said, I'd hook up the 590s, which I haven't hooked up the 590s to the, to the, 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 the Achilles yet. They'll get the next treatment because those are even more efficient than these, which is perfectly fine. Or I might, I don't think I've ever buy amped the 590s. I buy amped the, RF7 is to try to tone that treble down. In fact, I have cotton balls in the drivers of the 590, so I was using them near field. You could use these near field too if you just put them up on something. They're a little bit short. Let's see, Saber Dance is done. 
Oh, Mr. Robot. I don't know how much I could play of any of these songs before it's like, like it's gonna get copyright. If you've never seen Mr. Robot, you think you're hearing distortion, but if you've heard Mr. Robot, you know that's perfect reproduction of this fucking song. Ooh. What is this? Faithless? A Kind of Peace. Uh, featuring Cat Power from the All to All New Arrivals. I have no idea what that is. I don't even know what album or. I have it sorted by a duration of song. Every song on that screen has four minutes and 15 seconds. So if I hit, if I go down one and hit next, if I go down one. Oh, I'm shuffling. I hate that part of FUBAR. If you, it doesn't like, it just, I have up and down assigned to my keys. And wherever I click last is where it is. So I go down, do next. Ooh. That's filter. You know, like filter, like the band filter. God damn me. That's a really clean guitar. Holy shit. That's see, that's where they shine. That's where the that's where it's like, okay, normal, normal tower, normal tower's got a tweeter and a mid-range. And then you get to horns. Horn, horn, horn. I'm horny. I'm horny. I'm horny. I have all the horns. Those, that's more normal. That's a little tiny horn. You can see it's right there, a little tiny horn, oof. But that is a fucking horn. That's fuck you horn. And when you get a horn and you get the right instrument, because it's not every instrument, not everything sounds better on a horn. Like sometimes vocals sound a little bit weird because it's such a big wash of that higher frequency range. You kind of want like just dedicated smaller things. But when you hear like orchestral stuff, you know, symphonies and shit, oh my God, horn me up. Oh, I can't play any more of that. So I have it in, it's in duration order and then alphabetical order. So you got Faithless Filter and Foo Fighters. All I fucking can't play it. If I change the acoustic properties, like, you're probably able to play just fine. But then who the hell wants to listen to that shit? I don't, which is why I don't do it. Let me go back to shuffling. Um, How do I close up this video? Because it's like, I brought it down here and exactly what I expected to happen happened. They sound f tremendous. My upstairs room is, is sort of like, it's like if you're reading a book. Right, you open a beautiful book. You know the author. Okay, I've heard about great things about this book, but you're on, you know, a double decker bus driving through India in the summer, and there's just there's just too many people and there's noise and why is that elephant walking on the road and what does that smell? And so you're trying to enjoy this book. That's what an untreated room is like. It's still the same book. You still you, Game of Thrones, you know, Ice and Fire. You're reading it, it's a great book. It's all this other shit around you that's distracting you from the book. So coming to a quiet, sealed, you know, padded basement with a little bit of rug on the floor, and you could you could make a sound, and it barely echoes out anywhere. That moves you from that bus to a library. That's what that's the difference in room acoustics. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about. So we started this video off talking about how a speaker has a perfect volume level where it wants to be happy, and these still want to be loud, but we're not on that crowded bus in India anymore. We're in a library, so we could tone it down and still sort of enjoy, still sort of enjoy, still find that perfect area. So that's sort of like, it's, that's why when people ask me things like, hey, I have this living room and I wanna put this speaker and what, what volume should I set it? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what I should set my own speakers to most of the time. You just play with it. It's free to play. It, where's my arrow keys? I see Devil Man Cryberry. Cryberry. Cry baby. That's different. I mean, it's still loud. Like this, the, the levels I'm playing music at is usually levels that anyone would be like, why are you playing music so loud? And I'm just like, it's just playing music. 
you haven't heard loud. Loud was earlier, the half halfway point of this video. That was loud even for me. That was clubbing levels. And I don't want to push these tube amps that hard because they're only eight watts a channel. And I still can't believe how well they're doing. <laughs> You know, it's fucking, they're great. They're great speakers. They're worth $1,000. They they do what the 570s do, but bigger. And down here, it makes way more sense. And if you have the space and you can get convince someone that the 590s are the ones you want, there those are. Or if you wanted to spend twice as much money and you go with those, those are a little bit more finesse -y. They have that. They have that finesse. They give you that vocal clarity and imaging. Just the imaging of this is great, but you're only imaging really the horns the, the rest of it's just sort of like low-end fill with those you're imaging the tweeter and the mid-range and then the low-end fill is below that so it's just the shape of sound is completely wild this is a huge like i'm they're below my they're my listening here's where the tweeters are here's my nipples they're nipple height tweeter level yet we're still getting a nice wash of sound there so i can't ask for more than that for a, from a speaker that sits that low did I mute this? Uh, speaking of Game of Thrones. <sighs> can't play anything. Remember when that show didn't suck? That's right, Cobra Kai exists. Go back to Cobra Kai, go back to American Gods. My brother's re-watching Rome. Fucking Rome. Thirteen! Thirteen! That's what my brother's rewatching, and you know what? I kind of jealous. I could rewatch Rome, but I have too many new shows I want to watch. Okay, so, um, oh, if you've if you've not seen any of my other reviews of these JBLs, I, I forgot about this upstairs because I'm like, oh, everyone knows about these already. Obviously, no, they don't come to me to find new new things. The feet on these um, are little rubber, and they stick out the side, and they're adjustable. Uh, currently, they're aiming up a little bit, or at least that one is. So you can adjust and tilt them. I would not recommend tilting them forward because there is a warning on the back of each one of these JBLs that says, hey, person, stop standing there. You're gonna hit in the balls because they are super front heavy. The way this is designed with a smaller back, there's less material back here and the drivers are, so you have about that, ooh. There. After that, it falls on the ground in front of you. Kills your baby. Kills your dog. Kills your baby dog. You don't want to kill puppies? Don't lean it forward. So what I would recommend you do, if, especially if it's low like it is here, um, lean it back. Crank those out a bit. Give yourself like three quarters of an inch, an inch, or two centimeters, two and a half centimeters. By the way, I'm sorry that people in Europe can't get these JBLs. I've seen comments that's like, hey, why do we only get stupid Bluetooth speakers? I don't know why JBLs is fucking you guys over. They should just, I've seen them in Japan. I'm pretty sure Germany offered the 530s in like the wood grain, which I was like super jealous. I went to the 530, like these without black, these with like a cherry wood finish would be like, oh, I'll trade you all the rest of the speakers for those. So I don't know why uh, Europe and Asia's got them, but not Europe, go figure. Uh, America's a good market, but yeah, they, they have adjustable feet or you could change them out with spikes. Uh, if you have really thick carpet and the speakers sort of rock back and forth because they're not touching anything, you put the spikes on, it goes through the carpet and hits something solid so they don't fall over and kill the puppy. Uh, yeah, uh, you could use them with the drivers covered. I, I kind of don't like that. Like that, I only did that so I could review the uh, RF7s without like having some other more driver on top of driver. But then you can put the little plate in, in case you don't know how this works. I'll show you on the big boy speaker. The that comes with a grill, which looks like a snowshoe. These are obviously the actual snowshoe size snowshoes for the 590s. Uh, the grills for those are upstairs. Then you could just you get one of these plates and you go like this. Uh, 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 come on, wiggle, wiggle it just a little bit. Am I dumb? There's a way to get this to fit properly like a professional would do it maybe punching it's not the answer maybe punching it harder is the answer huh 
There's just two little rubber like things that's supposed to slide in there. Maybe you gotta come up first. Now this is a struggle that's real. Anybody else have this problem? Performance anxiety? Why you do this? This is staying in the video. I don't edit videos. I'm just trying to see why. There we go. I got it. Great, I got this side, but not this side now. What is happening? Hold on. Wait a second. There's a second one of these. If this one fits perfectly, I'm just gonna I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on the whole world. All right, whole world's bullshit now. Whole world's fucking bullshit. Bullshit! All of it! Anyway, you could run them like that with the little added piece, or you could run them with the full covers. I, I Honestly, I'm not sure what the wife acceptance factor is with these speakers. That's the one thing. Someone in the comments of one of my other videos that featured the 580s, or the Shape of Sound video, which came out today, um, said his wife thinks these look like a waterfall. And she loves them because they look like a waterfall. And I'm like, Mary, that's why you married her, right? Because she saw JBL Studio 5 anythings and was like, that's a waterfall? Ma marry me. Marry me. I think those would probably hit it off with ladies a little bit better. Just because they have something to do with white and contrast. And like, I don't know, in that wife acceptance factor video I did a long time ago. Uh, I can't use pasta to do another one of those either because she's a weirdo. She's like, are you going to get bigger speakers? Because I really want you to get bigger speakers. And I'm like... Listen, I can't pull over any farther. I'm all the way over. Keep pulling over, man. Oh, that's what I feel like. Just get bigger speakers. I'm, I'm guess those twenty-five thousand dollar Martin Logan um, CL Arts ones. I'm gonna have to get those. That's the next step. Anyway, uh, thank you to my wallet. I guess I would have to thank the patrons for buying this pair of speakers when they were on sale. You, uh, you're welcome for waiting until they were on sale, so I didn't waste your money. I now have everything in the line except for the subwoofer. Don't want subwoofer. 590s, 580s, 570s, 520 upstairs. Um, 530s in the shelf, another set of 530s in a box. So we good. We fucking good. I could set up a little miniature home theater with one, two, three size hurrahs and just just touch. Oh, God. Uh, that wallpaper, which was featured upstairs and down here, is in the description. Links to these on Amazon and on JBL.com. Unless I can find them someplace else that might have them. Uh, link to the sound demo, which I accomplished right before I did this video or finished this video. Did I actually have to link anything else? Spoiler alert. I don't remember. Yeah. I guess my final thoughts are, look, I own every single fucking speaker in the Studio 500 line. Every one of them. I bought it with money. Wasn't always my money. Sometimes it was your money. Sometimes it was my savings. But I own them so that I could know. Because I had to know. I had to know. What about the 580s? I got the 590s. I got the 570s. I had to, I'm a completionist. And you guys rooted me on to do it. And now I've got these. And I'm going, fuck, they're good. But I got to play them too loud to do them in that room. So I use 570s. And now I'm going to put the 590s on. And I'm going to see what the difference is. And that's just for me. That is not a video for you guys. Unless I live stream and then I explain it there on Twitch. Don't say the T word here. So yeah, I'm done. Wallpaper, links. Check out the sound demo in the description, which came out okay. A little bit a little bit sharper than the other ones because of the horn just fucking murders. But uh, yeah, check out uh, Patreon and Subscribestar. Five dollars a month, you get to see these video early. Uh, you also get to participate. Wow, I can't I keep saying precipitate. I'm going to have to make it so you can precipitate in the yard sales, but you can participate in the yard sales. From the 1st to the 10th of every month, I sell a bunch of things that are just, you know, I'm done with them. The whole shelf on that thing is just shit that I love, but I don't need. Uh, someone didn't buy the Mangird, Mangird tees. I, I offered them, and I offered them the second person. They haven't sold yet. They, no one's paid me for them yet, so they might be in the next yard sale. That's an expensive pair of items, but how many, how many things do I need? How many JBL speakers do I need? That one's a trick question. I'm keeping them all because I'm not shipping these in this climate. Fuck. Anyway, we're done here. Check out that. Check out uh, Patreon subscribe. Check out the $10 tier for the behind the scenes private Telegram chat. Live on my phone if you want. At Zio's Pantera when you're in there and I'll answer any questions you've got. 
Don't forget to check out the forums on Hi-Fi Guides, and don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides in general. And for any, we're going to update that real soon to have all a complete list of all sorts of things. Subwoofers, subwoofers are there. But we're going to complete the list. Um, hopefully, I'm getting a rhythmic sub to test. It's going to be, it's going to have to come down the back door. The back door man, the big rhythmic. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you. Good night. Can I go edit this now? Because I'm running out of videos. I need this today. Bye.